Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, which is your number one source for income-oriented investing. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about a very rational fear that pretty much everyone has when it comes to investing in the stock market, losing money, right? That's the first risk or fear that you think of or the first worry you have. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about six golden rules that I really try to follow myself uh, when it comes to my strategy. So six golden rules to never lose money in the stock market. Of course, keep in mind, these are just my opinions, but I strongly believe that if you follow these six rules to a T, you will never lose money in the stock market. So we'll go over these six rules uh, in details, and then I'll actually show you my portfolio to see if I'm actually following uh, these six rules myself. So how can you never lose money in the stock market? Let's check out these rules together right now. All right, everyone. So golden rule number one is a no brainer sector diversification, right? So you hear it all the time. Diversification, diversification is king. What does diversification really means? And note that I actually said sector diversification because there's several types of diversification there's sector diversification so there, there's 11 sectors of the stock market right real estate financials energy materials healthcare etc cetera, etc cetera. there's also regional diversification you don't want to just invest in one place in Canada, for example, you want to invest in United, the United States or maybe some international exposure as well. So diversification, I feel really that the sector diversification is the most important form of diversification. You want all sectors of the market because some sectors do good, some sectors do bad, and they all have their cycles. Some are very defensive, like utilities, uh, like healthcare. But some are cyclical, like financials, like energy, which means sometimes they do well, sometimes they don't do well. So if you have all the sectors, you're, you're diversified, it really helps you to lower your risk to never lose money in the stock market. But it pretty much, the downside of diversification, and yes, there is a downside, you will only ever capture average returns, right? So you hear... You know, you've seen these videos where Mark Cuban, Michael Saylor, even Warren Buffett says how diversification makes no sense or is stupid. Why are they saying that? Well, these guys are always trying to look for really superior returns than the overall average that the market, the stock market delivers. So if you want above average returns, you're, you're not going to want diversification. You're going to want to focus on those sectors that are going up, right? So in the last 10, 15 years, for example, if you were only concentrated in the big tech stocks, you would have destroyed the average of the stock market. So sector diversification, it lowers your volatility overall. It lowers your risk or volatility. Those two words are interchangeable, but it only guarantees you average returns, which is okay because the market average uh, is about 7 to 10% a year annualized anyway. So golden rule number one, sector diversification. I also feel it's more important in regional diversification. You know, you hear all the time you got to have North America and international. I think just having North America, me personally here, is okay. The U.S. market is king. They always outperform international markets anyway. So I think if you have at least Canada and U.S., you're okay in terms of regional uh, diversification. In terms of asset diversification, you know, there's four asset classes. There's equities or stocks, and there's fixed income, things like bonds, preferred shares. There's cash, which is basically, basically cash or GICs, term deposit, things like that. And then there's alternatives, which real estate kind of goes under there or you know anything could be alternatives paintings and stuff like that but when it comes to the stock market i really feel that going all equities is okay as long as you're diversified why because long term equities always beats fixed income so you hear a lot of that 60 40 stuff 80 20 now i think it's all nonsense i would say just go 100 percent equities but be sector diversified golden rule number two prioritize prioritize blue chip or big cap companies. So this is a no-brainer as, well, no -brainer as well, right? You really want to focus on the big companies. They have a lot less risks. They're leaders in their own sectors. They're well-established. Some of them have been around for hundreds of years. So capitalism, what does it do over the long term? It concentrates the economy. It, it makes monopolies, right? So these big, big companies get bigger and bigger because they could just buy out other companies. So you really want to focus on the big cap blue chip companies because there's a very, very, very small chance that they'll go bankrupt, for example. And these are really the companies you want, especially during the turbulent time. So you're reducing your risk 
almost a zero if you ask me if you're really concentrating on these big cap companies of course there are some exceptions i know everyone's going to say well what about lehman brothers or enron or nortel or whatever there are exceptions but you will reduce your risk tremendously uh, golden rule number three, no single stocks, no single companies. I really feel strongly about this one from all the one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions that I've done. 99% of people who got burned, who really got damaged is really because they invested in single companies. So you invest in one company, in one stock. I'm not talking about an ETF here, a single ETF, a single stock. You, no matter how amazing the company is, everyone, you have a single point of failure. So in the IT world, in my IT career, this was very dangerous, having a single point of failure. And as soon as, which means if that, that server, that thing goes down, we have a big problem. There's no backup plan. So you never want to have a single point of failure in technology. Why would you want it in your stock portfolio? So you have ETFs for everything now. You literally even have now ETFs with only one company inside of it, but try to stay away or stay away from single companies, stay away from that single point of failure because you could always go with an ETF now to have multiple uh, companies. So you definitely reduce your risk tremendously. Now I know what you're saying, but you have some, e you know, like an ETF that has a single company that does covered calls on it. So yes, that is technically a single stock, a single point of failure, but when you're adding covered calls, it definitely reduces the volatility, but it's no excuse. I do agree that that is a single point of failure. And this is really golden rules to never lose money. So uh, no single stocks, no single companies. Golden rule number four, don't use any leverage yourself. So that means don't borrow any money to invest because when you're borrowing on margin, if the market goes down a certain percentage, you could get margin called, which means the, the bank or your lender is going to want to sell your shares if you go oh, oh no, under your threshold or whatnot. So don't use leverage yourself. I think it's okay to invest in funds that use a little bit of modest leverage, but over leveraging yourself could be very very risky and it's a you know you could lose money so remember this is how to never lose money so my opinion here never use leverage never use margin do not borrow money to invest no matter how attractive the interest rate is i don't care if it's from your heloc home line of credit you know a year ago which the interest rates were rock bottom now they're much higher you could get in trouble when either the markets go down sharply that also depends on what you're investing in, but also when interest rates go up. So avoid leverage. And um, the next one is really for the last one, the last golden rule, which my opinion, the last golden rule number six here is the most important. So golden rule number five, only investing, only invest in income producing ETFs. You always want to get paid. This is very important. Now, this is guarantee you that you'll never lose money. It's not really about that. It's really to help you follow golden rule number six which i'm going to dis discuss in a second but you having funds or etfs or stocks that pay you consistently it basically helps you with the mindset so you don't have to panic sell so even when it goes down hey i'm still getting paid that month I'm still getting paid that month it really prevents you from doing rash decisions panicking selling at a loss remember this is about never losing money so it really helps a lot when whatever ETF you have or fund you have is paying you consistently. All right, everyone, golden rule number six, by far the most important golden rule, never sell, right? So this is where the, the, the fourth and fifth one uh, really helps you to follow this rule. If you never take leverage, if you're always only investing in income producing ETFs, you have a lot more reason or actually no reason uh, never to sell, right? So this is very important, everyone. If you don't sell, even if you're down, whether you're down, whether you're up, if you don't sell, you will never realize any losses or lose money. It's only when you sell something, <clears throat> you realize the loss if you're down on something. So if you have something that's income producing, you have a lot more motivation not to sell. So you have to understand, guys, that there's always going to be fear in the world, right? There's always going to be a war. There's always talks of the next recession. There's always going to be a bank banking problems and banking crisis. So in case you're a newer investor, you have to remember that these things have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. They're just economic cycles that are built into our system. We Our economic system is really boom and bust, right? So there's always going to be boom and then there's going to be a bust. And the bust is much, much more scary and severe then the booms, the booms is more gradual, longer period of time. There's definitely more boom than bust, but the bust is really, really, really severe. So there's a famous expression, stocks take 
uh, an uh, not an elevator, uh, an escalator to go up and an elevator to go down. That's it. So I kind of messed it up there. Uh, sorry about that. But uh, don't give in to the fear. Remember that there's always going to be problems. There could always be pressure on stocks and inflation and wars. There's always a war, everyone. So you never, ever want to sell. Now, when I say never sell, you know, you, you might be saying, well, you, you sell some stuff. You streamline. Well, um, what I mean by never sell is always have the intention of buying and holding something long term. That's the key. If you want to sell something to swap it into something else or streamline your portfolio because you see a, uh, another fund that you like uh, better, that's the same thing. That's okay. It doesn't have to be a super, super strict of just never, ever sell and that's it. You could streamline your portfolio. That's okay. What I mean is don't get it into something with the intention of selling it for a profit. Uh, that's where it gets dangerous. You want to buy something. Before you buy something, you want to ask yourself, can I hold this forever? That's the most important question. Is, does it have quality? Does it pay me all the time? Or is it designed to pay me all the time? I know some split funds that stop paying, right? They could stop paying, but they are designed to pay, right? And they eventually will pay. So you really want to try to have that in your mind or a mindset, long-term buy and hold investing, never sell. Because if you never sell, you'll never lose money. You'll never realize those losses. So do I follow all these rules? Let's check out my portfolio together and see if I do. All right, here is my latest portfolio unveil. So let's see if I actually follow all these six rules here. So rule number one, sector diversification. I definitely give myself a yes on this one. I'm very, very well diversified in all sectors here pretty much. My, my core positions or my focus really is on diversified ETFs. So I have to say yes on that one. Prioritize blue chip big cap companies. Again, yes. Uh, you know, I do have the Bitcoin, the Ether here. Does that really count as a blue chip company? I would say no. These two, I would say, are definitely the most risky things in my portfolio. And that's why I limited uh, their, their exposure to maximum 10%. It's about 9% now, something like that, a little over 9%. So um, I would say that besides these crypto ETFs, everything else is in big cap blue chip companies, more or less. Either they follow indexes where automatically when you're getting an index like an S&P 500, like which a lot of HYLD has or NASDAQ 100, the concentration is going to be on those big cap blue chip stocks, right? Uh, HDIV, all the leaders, the different sectors, but the leaders in the market, HDIV, all the leaders in there, BMAX, HMAX, big cap banks, um, even Tesla's a, a blue chip stock, you could say. All the split funds, pretty much blue chip as well. Uh, so I would say yes, definitely for this one. Next golden rule, no single stock. So this is where the Bitcoin and Ether doesn't really check that box, right? And I also have YTSL and ENS, which are, it's an ETF and a split fund that only has one stock. So I guess I'm not following this rule 100%, but for ENS and YTSL, you add cover calls to it. You definitely lower, lower the risk, right? Uh, no leverage myself, check. I don't take any leverage myself. Uh, income producing only, check again, every one of these is designed to pay every single month. Of course, there's some split funds I could miss, but they're still designed to pay all the time. If you're patient enough, they will eventually keep paying. And of course, never sell. So again, I have sold some stuff uh, in the past year, year and six months to really streamline my portfolio. But again, my intention is always to buy and hold something forever. So yes, I I would say I have, do follow this rule because I only sell something to swap it into something else or streamline. I don't really buy and sell to make a profit, right? I don't do that. I have a long-term buy and hold mentality. So all in all, I say I, I give myself a 90%, something like that. So I follow pretty much the rules, I would say some, not fully, but um, I, I think I'm pretty much there. Hey, don't go yet. A few reminders before you leave. Did you know that I launched a YouTube loyalty membership program where for only $3 a month, you could become a PII Inner Circle member where you will gain access to exclusive content, exclusive videos and live streams, as well as other perks and benefits, including a really cool weekly opportunity report. That's right. If you're interested, just click on the little join button next to the subscribe button to see what it's all about. 
Also, make sure to follow me on Blossom and download Blossom. It's a social investing app, which is really cool. You could share your portfolio, follow other people's portfolios, including my own. My username is Adrian underscore PII. So download it with the referral link below. Not only is it free, but you could actually earn cash by taking these really small, quick one minute courses. Really awesome. It's a no brainer. Also, make sure to visit our website, PassiveIncomeInvesting.ca. That's where you could book a one-on-one private coaching session with yours truly, with myself, where you could ask me all the questions you want. All the information and booking information is on the website. Make sure to check out that video on the homepage there to see how to book a one-on-one properly. Also on my website, you could purchase my digital product, which I'm very proud of, the Ultimate DIY Investing Package. This is a reference tool or a companion tool that will help you build your own portfolio. So it has lists of funds, it has sample portfolios, and it covers both the Canadian and US stock markets. And the good news is you'll only ever have to buy it once because it comes with free lifetime updates. And my plan is really to update the version every single year. So make sure to pick it up. Also, I have Questrade and Passive referral links below. So Questrade is the broker that I personally use and Passive is the broker companion tool or companion or assistant that I use. Really cool program, really cool software. So I have referral links for both of those. Questrade, $50 of free trades. And Passive, I have half off for the Elite Membership. If you're interested in the Elite Membership, And even if you want to start out with a free membership and upgrade to the Elite afterwards, use my referral code so you could still get that 50% off. And don't forget that the Elite membership of Passive is 100% free if you use Questrade. For social media, we have a very successful and big Facebook group, private Facebook group with over 14,000 members where we all try to help each other out. So make sure to join that group. Information is is below. We also have Instagram where you could follow us or more personal stuff uh, when it comes to our life here in Panama and there's LinkedIn as well. So as usual, everyone, how do I leave you? Continue to stay safe, stay healthy, and of course, stay passive. See you next time.